Assalamu alaikum friends, welcome back to the channel, always with Yuni Shafiri. In this video, you are going to see some of the component of the Kotlin Flow API called Stateflow. Let's get started. So here I'm having an empty project. This is a normal IntelliJ project. So I always advise people to check first the documentation of anything because the documentation contains the full information instead of a tutorial or an article. So this is the documentation, official documentation from Android. And there is this documentation from the Kotlin docs Kotlin Lang here. So this state flow and shared flow, we'll see that in the next video, are part of the Kotlin coroutine.flow. It's part of the flow API. And we need some basic information here in order to start understanding that. So it is an interface like this state flow and it is coming from shared flow. If you go to shared flow, you will see it is just a flow. So it is just flow. What does it mean? It means we can collect, we can do all the operation we would be able to do on the normal flow. But why do we need that? Why do we need this kind of state flow? Simply because we want to store the result of flow into something. Because when you collect flow, for example, you may set it to something, but here with the state flow, it will store the result of some flow and it will emit it to other subscribers or other, as you can see here, collectors. So that's the basic understanding. So a shared flow, it's represented read only state because we do have variation called mutable shared flow in which you can set our state. It is hot. What does it mean hot? Hot, it, will, it means it is active whether you are collecting from it or not. As opposed to normal flow, it's by default code. We see that also. It has a current value and it will always send the latest value to any collector. So let's say an example here. So basically what I will try to do, I will use that backing properties. I'll create private value. Let's call it mutable, mutable state flow. And this will be a mutable state flow. As you can see, here we define its type. It will be a string. I will emit a normal string. And here, as you can see, this is an error. We must provide an initial value. That's the main important aspect about this state flow. We must provide an initial value. This one will be, for example, A. And here, basically, you can simply start collecting. Let me do that global scope and launch it. And basically, what you can do, mutable state flow, and you can start collect anything. Here. That's it, and maybe you can do some printing here. So you may be wondering this kind similar to live data, where we have mutable live data and normal live data. We will be having that in a minute, but we will show the main difference. I will have an exposed value of that flow. Let's call it state flow, and its value will take it from that flow. Okay, but here you should define the type you want. I want state flow instead of normal flow, like that, and it will be a string. Yeah, something like that. All right, and basically this usually it is private, for example, in the view model. So basically we hide it and expose this one. So whenever you push something from here, it will go directly here. You can do it like that, or you can do it as state flow, like the following. Now, let me just run this. Let me just do a delay here, a delay of let me do five seconds and make this as a suspect main function. Let's just run it and see, it will present latest value which is a right and it will close afterwards now if i want to update this one let's say we have a function called get data for example and this function it will do like mutable state flow and it will try to emit you can do it like that emit or you can do the normal function which is a uh, value dot like that and basically it will be b but here i will do also a delay of one second and this will be a function. And here I'm getting this data. So what will happen? We will get our data first. It will be A, and then we will get another value. Let's run it. Oh yeah, we didn't get it because simply this isn't working anymore. So we need to do it like the following. So let's run it like the following. We will run it, we will get A, and then get some time and B. As you can see, it is working as expected. So this is a hot flow. So you must understand that this is a hot flow. It will be working whether you use it or not. That's one important thing. The second thing is that, as we said, the main difference with normal live data is that with live data, you don't have to provide an initial value. In this one, you must provide an initial value. The second thing is that this isn't life cycle aware. And this is important for Android developers. Like you can observe that in your activity, but this Let's say your activity go on pause, for example, or on stop, for example, it will keep collecting. So basically you will have, you need a mechanism in order to turn it off and turn it off. Usually you start doing that in a uh, scope. 
And that curtain scope, usually you use the life cycle curtain scope. And using that curtain scope, we can set something called repeat on life cycle and we specify the life cycle, for example, on stop. So basically it will turn off whenever you go to on stop, for example. So this, I think this is shown in the documentation here. Yeah, here is the backing property we said earlier. We must provide, sorry, initial value. And as you can see here, they are using this one, as you can see, life cycle scope. And here they are doing this repeat on life cycle. And this is important. So it will start collecting when life cycle is started and it stops when it stopped. So that's the main benefit. Here is the difference between live data and state flow. As you can see, it requires an issue value. And this one, by default, automatically register and unregister for on stop and uh, on start normally. But to achieve the same thing with the same behavior with this state flow, you must collect from life cycle on repeat life cycle block. This is important. And also keep in mind that when you observe from this state flow, you will get the latest value, all right? You will get the latest value from that state flow. If you have many, many observers, we won't run our computation again and again. We'll get the same value, which is the start value in this state flow. So basically here, I created another like collector from this state flow. As you can see, it's collecting things here. And uh, basically this will create just another one. It will start off by 500 milliseconds. And you will see that we will get the same values from this state flow. So if you have two collectors here, we'll have A and A and B and B two times. So that's it for this state flow. State flow will keep the state of flow here. So why do we need that? Why, why we don't use normal live data, right? So basically this is, as we said, this is part of the flow API. It's not part of the anything related to Android. So you can use it whether you are in Android or outside Android. That's one thing. And another specific reason specific for that is that this goes well with the flow. So if you have flow API, you are using flow API in your system, this will be a great usage for it because that way you can expose the result flow directly to your view model or in your view model directly to your activities and anything. But you must keep in mind those constraints we talk about like repeat on life cycle and so on. So this is it for this video. I hope you understand the essential and the crux of this thing, mutable or state flow, this is, it will just store and it will update and notify collectors that are collecting from this state flow directly with the latest value. So that's it for this video. I hope you understand the crux of this state flow. As we said, it is a hot flow, right? We use it to store value of flow and we use it to modify subscribers or collectors to this flow. So this is it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video at the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.